Hello and welcome to myfinanceteacher.org. All through October and even slightly before that, gold price has been trading within this somewhat of a symmetrical triangle and a couple of days ago it broke to the upside. At some moment compared to the breakout level, gold price even reached nearly 1.5% gains, 1.44% gains. That was just under the resistance level of around 1520. In the last few hours of trading on Friday, gold cooled off a little bit, but does this break out of the triangle mean that we are going to see gold much higher over the next few weeks? Let's talk about that. So first of all, over the last few weeks, I have been expecting gold to retest at least this consolidation zone of around 1430, 1440. And all over these last few weeks, Gold has consistently refused to go down to those levels. So you might say that I'm giving into FOMO, into fear of missing out, but I'm going to give it a slightly higher percentage chance that we are starting the next intermediate cycle within gold, having completed the previous one here on the very 1st of October. That is still not my main scenario. I would give it, say, 40% chance. That's already a pretty high probability. And I would still have another 60% chance allocated to the scenario where we are still in the ongoing declining phase of the intermediate cycle that's been ongoing here since late April, early May. So to be honest, I'm almost on the fence here. So let's just look at all the factors for and against a gold rally coming up over the next couple of months. And if that rally does come, you probably want to hang on to that one because that can bring us gold prices easily above 1600. So first, let's talk about the factors supporting an upcoming rise in gold price. That is a less likely scenario, by the way, where we will see dips sometimes. At least this daily cycle will have to give us a daily cycle low, but those dips are not going to go below that level of 1460, meaning that we have already seen the low for the previous intermediate cycle and we're in the advancing phase of the next cycle with gold price targets far above 1600. So again, before I continue, this in my opinion is a less likely scenario, although the chance is pretty high at about, let's say, 40%. First of all, let's start with the duration of the intermediate cycle. If it started somewhere here, late April, very early May, Add half a year to that, since these cycles last for about half a year, it, it should finish somewhere at about late October. So finishing on the 1st of October, although it's just a little bit early, it's not too early. It's very, very possible for the intermediate cycle to last just about three or four weeks less than average. So that was the first factor supporting higher gold price. The second factor is that these Bollinger Bands are getting narrow, and if you know much about technical analysis, you'll know that it's the narrow Bollinger Bands that indicate a high chance of explosive price movements. And that, of course, could be either up or down, but over the last few weeks, price has been declining gradually. So if we don't see an explosive move down, we might, might see an explosive move up instead. Number three is MACD. Here on Thursday and Friday, it gave us a buy signal, although sometimes those can be false signals, like here, for example, on the 23rd, 24th of September, MACD also gave us a buy signal, but since then, gold price did drop all the way down to 1460. Nevertheless, we do see a buy signal on MACD, and what's important is this signal is within the normal duration for an intermediate cycle low. Next factor is that number four, I'm, I've already lost count, is that this trend has possibly turned from being your friend into your enemy. Trend is your friend and uh, gold price has been following that trend all the way since early September. But here on Thursday and Friday, that downtrend line was first tested and then broken. So that's another score to the team supporting higher gold price without dips below 1460. And the next factor looking at dollar it's clear that the intermediate cycle in dollar, which started in late June, has topped over here at the beginning of October. And if a normal duration of six months actually takes place, we might still have another month or so of dollar going down. 
After all, even if OFOMC meeting on the 31st of October does not announce lower Fed rates, the Fed has already started printing $60 billion every month, and we mentioned that in the previous video. By the way, have a look at that. Hit that like button under this, as well as the previous video. Subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification as well. Another factor pointing to higher gold prices without dips below 1460 is the confirmation in miners. They also did break that down trend line and stayed above that trend line. So that might be a good sign for gold as well. And lastly, although COT reports are still very, very bearish for gold price, they were also quite bearish over here in summer of 2016, where that intermediate cycle, which blasted the gold price from around 1050 all the way up to 1300, actually came to a very soft intermediate cycle where gold price only dropped down to 1200 before the next intermediate cycle brought the prices up to 1370. At that soft intermediate cycle low, COT reports were still quite bearish and something similar might, might be happening now. So these are the arguments for gold price doing something like this, going up over the next few days, going down into the daily cycle low over the next week or two, but not breaking below 1460 and starting the advancing phase of the next daily cycle within the ongoing advancing phase of the intermediate cycle which will bring gold prices above 1600. I think this scenario is well it's pretty likely it's slightly below 50 percent 45 40 45 percent that is my opinion and it's not investment advice by the way. Next what's the reasoning for lower prices in gold Another buying opportunity in gold, either at 1460 or slightly below that, before the next intermediate cycle starts its advancing phase. Well, first of all, gold price is still quite high above its 200-day moving average. Even over here at the low on the 1st of October, gold price was still over 6.5% above 200-day moving average. And that's just a little bit too stretched on the upside it probably should decrease this percentage somewhat before the next rally can take place. If we look at history over the last six years, that's just after this significant drop of gold prices. Almost every single intermediate cycle low came below that 200 day moving average with only a couple of exceptions here in summer of 2016 and the previous intermediate cycle. And in that case, that other soft intermediate cycle in summer of 2016 was still less than 3% above its 200-day moving average. So can an intermediate cycle low occur with prices over 6.5% above 200-day moving average? Yes, of course it can. But there is also a good chance of further retracement back down towards that 200-day moving average. That's why I'm giving this scenario of continued following of this downtrend line of 60%. Another small technical observation on the chart is that although gold did break this downtrend line and stayed above that downtrend line marginally, it actually did fail to stay above the 50-day moving average. Gold is actually less than a dollar below its 50-day moving average. So maybe that was an unsuccessful attempt at breaking the 50-day moving average and staying above that and uh, possibly as the ongoing daily cycle in gold is already 24 days old and since these daily cycles last for about a couple of months we might soon see gold roll over into the declining phase of that short-term daily cycle which will possibly continue the declining phase of this intermediate cycle and and possibly break below that 1460 and bring us somewhere into that consolidation zone of 1440 or 1430, closer to that 200-day moving average. Gold also just poked through the upper range of the Bollinger Band and was, again, rejected by that Bollinger Band. There is a chance it's going to start moving towards the lower range of that Bollinger Band now, with the Bollinger Bands becoming even narrower before a significant collapse to a lower support zone. And then, the new intermediate cycle can start in earnest. 
Same thing happening with the miners. GDX failed to stay above its 50-day moving average, even though it did poke just a little bit through that 50-day moving average. Looking at the US dollar, although it is in the intermediate cycle decline, it looks like the daily cycle has finished in the middle of October, and we have one or two weeks of upside before rolling over into the declining phase of the next short-term daily cycle. So this one or two weeks of stronger dollar might actually bring gold somewhat lower. And maybe gold might break below this 1460. Even if gold doesn't break below 1460, we might get a second chance at entering long positions with a relatively lower gold price. And lastly, looking at the COT, as I already mentioned, the commercials, the smart money, that's the red line over here, they're extremely negative on gold price. Sometimes they do get it wrong, just like in summer of 2016, for example. But in any case, COT reports at the moment are somewhat bearish on gold price. But remember, I'm just talking about a very short-term blip down to 1460 or below that. In the intermediate or longer term, I'm really, really positive, really, really bullish on gold price. Looking at GDX here, for example, I see this bullish wedge which is a little bit like a triangle, but with both sides either pointing down, in which case it's a bullish wedge, or both sides pointing upwards. Something like that would be a bearish wedge, where price oscillates between these two ranges and then breaks down. Again, that's just from trading history. Nobody knows the future, and the projections of future price is just based on what is likely to happen based on what did happen in future in similar scenarios and how many times it happened. So what is my strategy here with precious metals? Well, unfortunately, personally, I don't hold any precious metals related assets at the moment. And given that in the longer term, I'm extremely bearish on precious metals. I think I should start having a core kind of a hodl position, which I never sell. And in addition to that, I would probably have another trading side of the portfolio where I would try to buy at intermediate cycle lows and sell at intermediate cycle tops. So over the next few weeks, I will try to accumulate that core position. Will I buy on Monday when the markets open? Maybe. I'm not sure. I'm thinking about buying with 10% of my gold related or precious metals related assets. That will still give me 90% of cash in a precious metals related portfolio. And even if the price does break down towards 200 day moving average, I can average down. Plus I'm building a core position anyway. And over the next couple of years, I am definitely sure gold price is going to be significantly higher given the billions and trillions of dollars, yen, and whatever other currencies central banks have been printing over the last few years. So I'm going to buy a little bit on Monday, and if instead gold price continues up and gives us a short-term daily cycle low with just a minor dip, I will be adding on those dips from that cash position as gold price generally trends upwards. So that's my opinion and strategy. Well, let me know, guys, what do you think? I really would like to have another chance of buying gold sub-1460, to be honest. So share your opinion in the comments below. Hit that like button. Have a nice weekend and good luck in your trades.